I was born a slave, sold as a slave, and bred as a slave in the United States of America, in a polygamous cult, our terrifying God commanded women live polygamy or be destroyed. I was born in Utah, where polygamy, power, and murder were front page news for over a decade. Religiously justified murder, called blood atonement, or honor killings, is a basic doctrine in most patriarchal polygamy. Polygamists blame the Bible if they're Jewish, Christian, or Islamic. Others blame early Mormonism, even if they're not members of a Mormon church. Religion, the perfect cloak to cover polygamy's crime. Polygamy is increasing in and out of religion. The money trail proves that polygamy is motivated more by government funds than it is by religion. I am one of 39 children born to my father's six wives, sold as a child bride. I watched money change hands knowing I would be given to a stranger who had seen me for the first time a few days earlier. Like all of my father's illegitimate children, my birth certificate is a forgery to protect dad from any legal responsibility. My birth certificate said that I was 15. I don't believe I was 15. One girl was married at nine, another at 11. I grew two and a half inches after the birth of my first child. I had nine pregnancies and six living births, all except one by the time I was 23. If I was 23, Child brides fuel polygamy's economy. They are bartered for position, power, and favors. But more importantly, they provide the next generation of child brides and child labor that will work for God's profit. Either way you spell profit does apply here. Most of the profit comes from government funds. Tax dollars create wealthy polygamous leaders. Anderson Cooper reported on polygamy and taxes, as did Mike Watkiss, Arizona Family TV, and Ed Casilia, investigative news reporter, St. George, Utah. Polygamists typically teach anti-government doctrines, including taking government funds as their superior religious right. Hilldale, Utah, and Colorado City, Arizona, are divided by one street. They are polygamous communities controlled by Warren Jeffs. This is Joe Jessup's family. In the centerfold of National Geographic, February 2010, this is one Hilldale man's family, supported by tax dollars. A census said that Hilldale's income was zero. Rarely does a father provide for his polygamous family, but the father does control the family and the money until he turns it over to the prophet. Warren Jeffs, arrested. Texas follows a shocking money trail. Warren had $53,000 cash when he was arrested, just a drop in the bucket. Many men gave him their daughters as well as their money. Here are 57 of Warren's wives. He had over 80. 
All of these girls' surnames, except the Zitting girl, are in the genealogy books on my mother's side of our family. Charles Zitting served time in the Utah State Penitentiary in 1945 with my father, future father-in-law, uncles, etc., for crimes relating to child brides and trafficking. Fumarous disease is caused by inner breeding, and it is the highest in the world in fundamentalist Mormon polygamous groups. Warren Jeffs with child brides. This is the temple bed where Warren raped his 12-year-old child bride, Brenda Lee. The recording of her rape in this temple at Yearning for Zion Ranch in El Dorado, Texas, was the final evidence that sent Warren to prison for life. Rulin Jeffs with twin child brides. Rulin is Warren Jeffs' father. Rulin Jeffs performed my marriage when I was a child bride. Rulin had over 70 wives when he died, which Warren inherited. One of them was Rebecca Musser. You may have seen her on Dateline. Winston Blackmore, nine child brides and so many wives he couldn't remember their names for his own court hearing. Over 200 children, an airplane, an entire town where schools received two million per year, and education was neglected. All this and more, financed by tax dollars. Winston owes $4.3 million in personal taxes. He is a leader of Bountiful Canada, Bountiful, where children are smuggled back and forth across the Canadian border for child brides and child labor for as long as I can remember. Marrying girls at puberty makes polygamy work. Children that know no other way of life, uneducated about the real world and how to survive in it, are easy to control, especially when they are dominated by fear and continual pregnancies. Polygamists are noted for bidding jobs lower than other contractors can afford and having the work done by children who are never paid. Warren Jeffs even bid jobs in Nevada. Contractors unable to compete were unaware that their competition was free child labor. The Pentagon paid $1.7 million to polygamous bosses, bosses who supervised child labor. Are fundamentalist Mormons the only polygamists doing this? Of course not. And we are not the only nation with this problem. Canada recently had the biggest court case in the history of their country when they decided to keep polygamy illegal. Polygamists were draining the national coffers. Thousands of polygamists moved to the United States. Based on the most comprehensive study ever done on the subject, Canada's Chief Justice Robert Bowman stated, polygamy does massive harm to society. Crime and violence are much higher in polygamy. Polygamy's extreme dual standard creates extreme human rights violations. We must stop financing this. Never again should any child be a slave in the United States of America. <laughs>